All right. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the Happy Wife School uh, live episodes every Saturday. Uh, as always, I'm very excited to be here and get started on our topic today. Why get married? Why get married? That's what we're going to be talking about as we get into it. I always like to wait just a second or two uh, just to make sure everyone can hear me okay. Um, so I'll wait just a second until I hear some, see something pop up in the chat box that I am live and, and we're ready to get started. So as always, I will talk to the women a little bit in this episode, why get married? And I will talk to the men a little bit in this episode, why get married? Uh, sounds good. Hello. Nice to see you all here. Thanks for being here. Uh, so yeah, I'm going to keep going. And just as a, a if you're new to my live streams and, and you're you're here for the first time, thank you, Craig, uh, Abraham, and, and Frowmy. Uh, and Jack, nice to see you again. Uh, all right, I'm going to put the, the chat window down. So how I like to do my live streams is there will, like I said, will be a segment for women and a segment for men around why get married. And also my audience are women and good men who are married and they're struggling to make it work. They're lost and and how to navigate each other, uh, how to navigate the marriage, um, but they want to make it work. Uh, those are that's my ideal audience that that I'm speaking to. And so, yes, I'm talking about why get married, but so for those considering marriage, but also talking to women and good men who are married and, and want to make it work. And that's that's where we're going today. So I'm going to set it up a little bit, and then I will talk to the women for a little bit, and then talk to the men for a little bit in the things that I have to share today. And then for those in the chat and, and those watching live, welcome. Uh, it's so nice to have you here, and, and I really enjoy doing live videos as much as I enjoy doing recorded videos. Uh, I didn't get a recorded video this week. Uh, we had uh, a water main break underneath our office building uh, this week. So things got a little a little turned upside down for a little bit, but we're we're back at the office and and ready to go. Um, so I will set it up a little bit. And then for those watching live, those in the chat box, uh, I take a look at the chat box in between uh, my segments of talking to the ladies first and then talking with the men. So do you know I will I will peek in the chat box a little bit. And somebody had a great idea last week that thank you so much uh, for suggesting this. That if you have a question for me, um, please, when you type it into the box, put question in all caps because that will make it so much easier when I'm scrolling through. I cannot read through everything. Uh, but if you put question in all caps that will help that grab my eye. And if it's a question that I think will benefit what we're talking about today um, and a question that I can answer on the live, then I will do that. But I do that in the middle between segments and then a little bit at the end. And that's how that's how I do the live show. So again, thanks for being here. Please hit the like button. Uh, there's someone that joins in my live streams, Mona, that's always so great at reminding me to <laughs> ask people to hit the like button so this can video can reach more people. Uh, subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Hit the notification bell so you're notified when I put new videos out. And let's get started. So why get married? And the reason that I want to talk about this, a couple of reasons. But one is I've been watching a little bit on YouTube, this back and forth uh, between the red pill community and between the Daily Wire about marriage being a, a good thing to do, marriage not being a good thing to do, that, that marriage is an awful thing to encourage men to do, uh, that marriage is, is a dying institution, and then the Daily Wire being pro-marriage. And so that just got me thinking of what do I want to talk about as it relates to this topic. And as you might know, in watching my videos, if you've watched for a little bit, I am pro-marriage, but in a different way and from a different perspective. And what I want to do today is really redefine marriage because how we view marriage and how we go about marriage 
is the very reason that it's not working and that it 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 has the failure rate that it has and that it 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 can can cause the problems that it causes i want to redefine marriage for both women and for men because that's what i had to do for myself i got married for all the wrong reasons and i was very very fortunate to meet my mentor who really supported me in not running away from my marriage and really embracing marriage as another context in life to grow and learn and for me as a woman to use marriage as the context as the vehicle for me to evolve as a woman and to evolve in the best version of myself as a woman and i often say and you've probably heard me say before in some of my videos that my marriage and my relationship with my husband have become my greatest teachers um it's the the best spiritual journey I could have taken that I didn't even know that I needed. And, and many of you have also heard me talk about, I was um, a spiritual seeker and I was very woo woo. I am not anymore. Uh, and marriage actually became my greatest spiritual journey. And so I want to set it up and be very, very clear from the get go and talking about this today that I am not suggesting that marriage is for everyone. I am not suggesting that marriage is for everyone or that every person, that every man and woman get married because that is, is simply not true. It's not for everyone, just like college isn't for everyone or starting a business isn't for everyone or having children isn't for everyone. Marriage is not for everyone. But for those of you who have marriage as a value, and something that is important to you because either you are married or you aspire to be married someday is that marriage is for those who it is important to you and a value for you. And I want to redefine it and give you a path for marriage that truly works and makes it constructive and makes it a, a beautiful place to be and what can be a beautiful dance between women and good men. So I'm very clearly pro marriage and I, I wanna give a path and a path that is different that has worked for me and my husband. We have a, a beautiful, lovely, healthy, happy marriage and a dance together. And there is no other place that I would rather be than in, in my marriage and having this dance with my husband and having this journey with him and I, I want to share that. And, and that's my purpose for my channel and my purpose for my message and what I'm doing even beyond my channel and who I, I want to be in the world and, and helping women and helping good men is, is that I started this channel to support women, to support good men who are lost in marriage and, and lost in understanding, understanding the dynamics between us and how to navigate. Um, so that's that's the premise of, of what I am, I'm talking about. And I'm not here to convince anyone. I'm here speaking to those who marriage is a value and you want to find a way to make it work or you do aspire to get married someday. And if it is not a value to you and it's not something that's important to you, don't get married. Because marriage will never, ever, ever be the thing that makes you happy. It cannot be something you go into thinking it will make you happy, thinking it will complete you in some way or make you whole in some way, because marriage itself cannot do that for you. But marriage is and, and, and can be and needs to be an incredible path and journey of self-actualization, becoming the best version of yourself and having that dance and having that union together as men and women, because it's it's the relationship that we need. And, and I firmly believe in, in living it and teaching others that marriage is necessary for us as women to really know and understand ourselves as women, to evolve as women, and for men to know themselves as men and to evolve as men. And we're going to talk more about that. 
today. So bottom line, before I get into speaking to women, is that marriage has to be redefined into a place that we grow and learn about ourselves and that we use as a path and a roadmap to becoming the best version of ourselves and our spouse in the marriage get the benefit. So I'm going to jump into speaking to the women and, and speaking to the women about why get married or and why stay married. So what we have to understand as women is, is that everything that we have been taught about marriage is based on codependency. It's based on codependency of needing our husband that we're needing getting married to make us happy and to provide something to us and provide things to us that we will not provide ourselves. And like I said, just a few moments ago, I got married for all the wrong reasons. And most of us as women get married for all the wrong reasons. We get married because we think it will make us happy. We get married to check it off as the next thing we think we're supposed to do in life or that we should do in life. We get married to be taken care of. We get married to have children and have our children fill our lives and give us a path in life to have our children take care of us one day. We get married for security. And, and those are the reasons that as women, if we get married for those reasons, we will be incredibly unhappy and incredibly miserable because we will continue to have this void and emptiness. I like to think of it like we're a bucket with holes in it. If we get married to fill that emptiness and to fill that void within ourselves and have another fill that bucket with holes in it, we will continue to feel empty on the inside, continue to be unhappy and never have that filled. It's, it's a path to being miserable and a path to being very unhappy. Please watch my video on why 80% of divorces are filed by the wife. I go into depth about how a marriage cannot make you happy and, and why women file for divorce and run so quickly. So please watch that video to learn more about that. But everything we've been taught is about codependency. And as long as women, as we get married for those reasons to be taken care of, to have that void and emptiness fulfilled, then we will run or we will destroy our husbands in the process and emasculate them because we blame them for what we believe they are doing or not doing to make us so unhappy. So for women, we have to redefine marriage. The solution to the problems and the issues that we have in marriage is not getting our husbands to change and, and blaming them and looking for them to become someone for us. The solution to the problems we have in marriage is redefining it to see that marriage is our greatest teacher to expose the limitations in us so that we can evolve as women. And this was not the reason that I, I came into my marriage. As I said, I was very fortunate to meet my mentor who helped me redefine marriage and helped me to find the commitment in myself to stay and to work things out with my husband, but to work things out with my husband by means of working on myself to begin to use my marriage as the mirror and window into my own unhappiness. Because the ways that I treated my husband and that I talk about all the time on the channel and in my videos and how as women we treat our husbands who are good men. Remember, my message is for women married to good men and good men married to women. Are all the ways that we project our own insecurities, our own happiness onto them. The marriage reflects that back to us. And the marriage is the best mirror and the best window into ourselves and our own unhappiness so that we can outgrow our woman ways. We can outgrow our insecurities. And for me, marriage became a path and continues to be a path for me to develop my sense of integrity and character as a woman. And that has become my evolution as a woman in my marriage because I came into my marriage very walled up. I had massive walls because as women, 
and myself included, we carry all of our hurt and heartbreak through life with us into our marriage. And how we carry that hurt and that heartbreak into our marriage is we build walls. And those walls disconnect us from our true nature as women and really knowing and understanding ourselves as women. When we have walls up, we are hardened. We become what I call the ice queen. We are unavailable. Um, We push our husbands away. That's where we emasculate them and make them wrong and bad for who they are. And these walls are very destructive to our sense of self and they are very destructive to our marriage and very destructive to our husbands. So my marriage became the mirror for me to begin to drop my walls, to know that in being married to a good man whose nature is to be kind, loving, thoughtful, hardworking, a good provider, responsible, that my marriage with my husband was the safest place for me to drop my walls and to learn to show up not armored but to show up soft, which my other mentor, Peggy, defines as strength without fear. And our true nature as women is soft. It is kindness and nurturing and loving and caring. But as women, we're wired to disconnect from that true nature of who we are as women to wall, put our walls up to go out into life armored up because we're terrified of getting hurt. We're terrified of getting taken advantage of. And what we have to use marriage as to a good man is a a safe and incredible journey to begin to drop our walls so we do discover our true nature. And in that, we evolve as women and our husbands get the benefit of it but I have to be in it for myself. And some of you will say, well, that's selfish. This just sounds selfish. What's the point of marriage? If it is to provide what you need to yourself and to use it as a pathway to becoming the best version of yourself. Well, when we can become the best version of ourselves, everyone, including our husbands, get the benefit. And for me, I wanted a healthy marriage. I wanted a marriage that was loving, caring, uh, full of kindness, uh, full of growth, intimacy, connection, communication, having a best friend. But I had to learn that I had to be all of those things for myself first, because if I didn't have kindness in me, if I didn't care for myself, If I didn't have an intimate relationship with myself, I was never going to have that with my husband. And he couldn't provide me with those things if I didn't have them within myself. Because again, we're the empty bucket with holes in it. And so anything they do to try to provide that to us, it just leaks right out. And again, we feel that emptiness within ourselves. So my marriage first became the journey of building a healthy relationship with me to be my own best friend, to be kind, loving, and caring to me. And then that began to translate in my marriage and my relationship with my husband. And now we have the relationship that I said I always wanted, where it's loving and caring and full of kindness and intimacy and growth and communication and connection. But that couldn't happen without me being connected to myself and having a healthy relationship with me. Now that gets mirrored back. It was just counterintuitive to how we thought it's supposed to happen. I saw a meme once that said, you take care of, or like something like love is simple. You take care of me, I take care of you, end of story. And that respect for us as women, that's where we come from a place of being codependent. And then it never works because no matter what our husbands do, no matter how they show up, it's never enough. It's never done right because we don't have those things within ourselves. So I teach women in, in my happy wife program, I teach women 
it, when you actually provide those things that you always wanted a man or you always wanted a husband to provide to you, when you provide those things to yourself, the cherry on top is you're married to a good man. You become the best version of yourself. You learn to show up with character and integrity. And then you have the marriage you always wanted that is full of fun and intimacy and love and trust and care. But it has to come from us. And then it gets reflected back in the marriage. And what I had to learn is that there was a huge difference between being taken care of and being cared for. And it wasn't until I gave up wanting my husband to take care of me and learn, it, learn to take care of myself that I could actually be care, a caring partner. And then my husband, who's a wonderful man, was right there waiting for me because his natural character and who he is as a good man is to be caring. And so now we care for each other in the relationship as an expression of both of us working and on a path of becoming the best version of ourselves. And that path is our marriage. And so that ladies, for those of you listening, and they are out there, they are out there. Um, I get comments all the time of there's no women here. They're here. They're here. They just don't always comment or they reach out privately. Uh, but for those women listening, you have to redefine your marriage if you are married or you aspire to be married one day is that it's not something that's going to make you happy that your husband isn't there to fill the holes in you and make you whole and complete. You have to make yourself whole and complete. And your marriage is the best place, the best place for you to evolve as a woman, to learn to drop your walls and to find your true nature of being soft, loving, kind, and caring. And it is from that place of using marriage as that purpose to grow and learn that then you have the loving marriage that you always wanted and the dance with your husband that is incredible. I. Even in my fantasy of what I wanted marriage to be before I was fortunate and blessed enough to find this path. Even in my fantasy, I never knew or could know <laughs> that marriage could be so wonderful and that I could have a truly loving relationship with a man and that he was going to teach me, he was going to be my window to really find and understand myself as a woman. I had <laughs> no idea of that. And it brings me to tears because the, the depth and reverence that I have for myself and my husband and the relationship that we have. And I, I know without, and there was something my, my mentor said to me as I was really stepping onto this path to use my marriage to grow and evolve as a woman I was really stubborn in the beginning. I didn't like many of the women watching or women who do comment who are very upset with me and very angry. I was also very stubborn and didn't want to see myself as the problem, but I was open-minded and somewhere in me, I didn't know that I was the problem and that I had to change. And I was the common denominator in all my relationships with men, but I was stubborn in the beginning. And my mentor said to me at one point and pushing me, he said, Karen, if you're not going to change and you're going to continue to treat your husband the way you're treating him, it's better for you to leave. And I sat with that. And I knew in me that that's not the woman I wanted to be. And that if I left, that wherever we go, there we are, that I was just going to do the same things over and over again. And so I felt very blessed that I had that that knowing in me of stay, stop being stubborn, jump in, learn this. You need to learn this. <laughs> and I'm very grateful for that because had I not changed, it, it would not have been a supportive place for my husband and I. And I had no idea what it, who I was going to evolve into and what the marriage and relationship was going to evolve into until I was on that path and headed down it. 
and really working on myself mainly to drop my walls, to develop my character and my integrity as a woman and learning to hold myself accountable to my behaviors and recognizing that my behaviors and my marriage had consequences. That when I treated my husband poorly, whether that was through being controlling or nagging or judging him or criticizing him or shutting down and becoming the ice queen, that those behaviors have consequences. That when I did those things, my husband would pull away. He would react poorly to me. We were disconnected. We were very, very distant. And then recognizing, oh, those behaviors have consequences. And then taking accountability for those actions and changing then became the, the very path of my marriage and my husband becoming my greatest teacher. So that's what I wanted to talk about for women. And I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to take a peek at the at the chat box, and then I want to redefine marriage for men. And again, if you're just joining the live stream or, or just listening today, I'm I'm talking about why get married. And I want to make it again very clear that marriage is not for everyone. It's for those who it is a value. It is important to you. It's something you aspire to, or you are married and you want to make it work. That's who I'm talking to. And by no means should every person get married because it's not for everyone. But if it is a value to you, then it's something that you you step into smartly with a plan, with a path. And in order to do that, we have to redefine marriage. And that's what I'm talking about today. So I just wanted to say that again for those who might be, be joining um, so let me just take a whoa, uh, look in here. It's always a little overwhelming when I pull up the chat box because there's so much in there. Um, all right. So like I said, it's helpful to me. I'm, uh, yeah. Uh, oh, thank you. Uh, Karen sharing your videos, uh, with MG Toe brothers. We need more women to listen to your perspective. Yes, I agree. Um, Jack, I, I just wish the laws would change. They destroy men and the children never saw that that would happen. Um, very good point. And uh, that's actually something that I knew could potentially come up in the comments today. Uh, what about the divorce laws and, and what about the bias towards men and marriage and, and the raw deal that it can be um, based on the laws? And that is the reality. Uh, the divorce laws are very biased and very, very skewed towards men. And the perspective I like to give, again, it's not something you run into blindly. Um, just like you don't run into starting a business blindly. 90% of all businesses fail. 90% of all businesses fail. 50% of marriages fail. <laughs> so you don't run into a business blindly. And I'm speaking to men who maybe aspire to be married one day. And if you don't, and that's not a value, don't get married. But if it is a value and it is something you aspire to, you don't want to run away from the risk. Because when we run away from anything in life, whether we are men or women, we become victims. We become victims to something that is out of control, that has the power over our experience. So it's very, very important the men who aspire to get married do their homework, do their research. And just like in a business and starting a business, you don't go into it blindly. You have to do your homework. You have to do your research. You need mentors. You need people to guide you. You need a plan. You need to assess the risk and know how to manage the risk. It's the same thing with marriage. So for men who do want to get married or want to be in a committed relationship, you do need to do your homework. You do need a plan in place. You do need a mentor and someone to guide you through the process so that you are managing the risk. So thank you for that comment because uh, that was something that I knew would come up and, and would be important to address. Um, and then I think I, I started to say something and didn't finish it. But if you have a question for me, it will be helpful if you just put like question in all caps. Uh, George Bruno, wonderful to have you. Thank you so much. Uh, for being here and being so supportive. Um, and I'm not seeing any questions pop up, so I'm going to go into 
go into the second half and speak to men why get married so it's different well what's the same is redefining marriage that it has to be something that you want to go into to grow and learn about yourself and become the best version of yourself as a good man that that is the overall message today for women and men is that we need a different purpose for marriage to make it work to make it a beautiful place to be, to make it a dance. And I want people to know that it's possible. And I, I want people to have hope. And I want people to see the good side of marriage and what it can be. And in order for it to be what it can be, it has to be the purpose. Again, it has to be a vehicle to grow and learn and become the best version of ourselves. But that path looks different for good men then it looks for women. Again, as women, we have to outgrow our woman ways. We have to learn to drop our walls and we have to learn to actually be who we are as women in our marriage. And that our husband is the mirror for us to become women, to become real women. And for good men, it's marriage becomes your window and your path to become strong and confident in yourself as a good man. And so, of course, the common comments that come up when I talk about this is how can you tell a man to stay in a marriage with a woman who is emasculating? And it's very important to know I'm not trying to convince any man to stay with a woman who is emasculating. But the truth is, over the years and working with good men, is that good men, and again, I'm also talking about the normal, average, everyday people who have the normal range of issues and problems in their marriage, not talking about the extremes or, or dysfunctional relationships that are beyond the point of being healthy. That's not who my message is for. It's for women with good men and good men with women who want to make it work. And my experience over the years and working with good men is that in spite of how they are treated by their wives, being emasculated, which shows up in the forms of women being shaming, nagging, controlling, having their walls up. Um, and there's so many, many other ways. Uh, check out my video. Uh, clear signs that you emasculate your husband or, or 10 habits that emasculate men, I think is, is the title of the video. The thumbnail is clear signs you emasculate your husband. So check that out to hear more about emasculation. But that on a spectrum, all women have those behaviors. All women have those behaviors. So the journey for a good man in a marriage is to expose the weaknesses and limitations in him that allows him to be emasculated by his wife. The purpose for a good man in marriage is to expose the limitations and weaknesses in himself that allows him to be emasculated, not for his wife, but for himself. Because the weakness and limitations are in him. And so his wife becomes his greatest teacher to expose those weaknesses and shortcomings. To then the emasculation actually becomes the strengthening tool. Whereas he becomes strong and confident in himself by seeing the reality of his wife and how she operates in her woman ways then he learns to stand up to her in a responsible, respectful way and uses those weaknesses and limitations that have been exposed to become his strengths. So then the emasculation bounces off or it doesn't happen anymore because the wife learns to respect her husband and re recognize her games, emasculation and tricks will no longer work. And I think I, I skipped over this point I was trying to make a moment ago. The reality is, in working with good men over the years, 
that in spite of the confusion they feel in their marriage, the, the inability to do the things that their wife wants, the things will make her happy, or they do those things, she's still not happy. They feel resigned in their inability to understand their wife and how to make her happy. And so a good man comes to me because he's like, I want to know what to work on in myself. I want to take responsibility for myself. He just never imagined it had to be in the way of exposing those limitations and weaknesses in himself and seeing the reality of how his wife operates in the marriage. And that all women, I teach good men, he didn't get the wrong woman because on a spectrum, all women are emasculating. And, and most good men have women that are in the, in the average of her emasculating ways. It's the, the typical things of what you see in sitcoms or in movies that then he learns to use those things, those, those emasculating ways of how his wife shows up to strengthen himself and find his confidence to become the best version of himself. And a marriage or a, re a committed relationship with a woman is the best place for a man to learn to be a man. There's a quote from the book that I've talked about a few times in my videos, The Proper Care and Feeding of Husbands, where Dr. Laura in that book says something along the lines of a, a man would rather walk into war than to face the scorn of his wife or face the scorn of a woman. And so it's teaching men not to run away from that, just as men don't run away from war. They walk in bravely and with courage and with honor because that's where they know their strength and confidence as a man. The walking then into the scorn or emasculating ways of his wife is the greatest context for him to find his strength and confidence as a good man because that is often because of the, the, the crushing that a good man feels from the emasculation of his wife. That is the perfect container to walk into to find his strength and confidence and use his wife as his greatest teacher, not for her, for the sake of him and gaining his confidence and strength as a man. And then again, the emasculation bounces off or it doesn't happen as often in a man navigates and, and manages the relationship and feeling strong and good about himself as a man in a way that he never could in any other context. And then there becomes a dance, the same as us for women as for men. There becomes a dance in the relationship from him finding his strength and confidence in the face of his wife being emasculating. So there's a story that I like to share to explain this a little bit. And it's from a, a parable. It's actually a children's book uh, and parable called The Little Soul in the Sun. And I'm gonna give an abbreviated version of it because this story is, is the best for good men to understand what they're walking into with their wife or walking into in a marriage if they aspire to be married. And, and how you want to view this dynamic of growing into the best version of yourself as a good man and using your wife in marriage as a greatest teacher. And this parable also applies to women. Again, it's just from a different direction because of the things we have to work on in ourselves as women. And it's also a beautiful parable for any relationship in life. But again, it's called the little soul in the sun. And the story goes that there's a little soul having a conversation with God. And the little soul is so excited because it has discovered that it is the light. And it goes to God very excited about its discovery of itself as light. And he says, but I want to know what it's like to be the light. And God says, well, the only way that you can learn to be the light is to go in and have a human life because everything in my kingdom, all it is, is light. And in order to know and experience yourself as the light, you have to have the dark. Just as you can only know hot with cold, 
or the night with daytime or right from left. We need the opposite to contrast up against. And he says, so you're going to need to go into life. And he says, what do you want? God asked the little soul, what do you want to learn about yourself as the light? And the little soul was thinking, he's like, there's so many special things I could learn about who I am as the light. I could learn courage. I could learn bravery. I could learn kindness. And he says a number of other things. And he eventually gets to that the little soul wants to come into life to learn forgiveness. And God says, well, if you want to go learn forgiveness, you are going to need someone to forgive. And another little soul pipes up and it says, I'll go, I'll go, I'll go be the one that you forgive. And that little soul says, but I need you to do something for me that I'm going to have to become so shrouded in darkness and do things that are so out of my nature of who I am that I will forget who I am as the light and I'll need you to remind me. And so these two little souls make this agreement to come into life so that they can learn from each other. And as God is listening to their agreement, he speaks up and he says, remember, all I send are angels. So whether you face great sorrow, great loss, the amount of, of darkness you might face, know that I only send angels. And God's message in that is no matter what this little soul comes up against in life, no matter how hurt it gets or how lost it gets, that the purpose of that hurt is for him to grow and learn and become who he is as the light. And in that way, everyone that he, he meets and comes across in life, no matter how badly they hurt him, are his greatest teachers that he's asked to come and be exactly that so that he can become and know who he is as the light. And that's what I teach good men is to imagine your wife, no matter where she is on that spectrum, as the soul that you ask to come in and be exactly who she is so that you can become who you are meant to be in your gifts and your strength and your confidence as a good man. And when we view either marriage that way and for good men, the relationship with their wives or any for any of us that anyone we perceive as hurting us so badly, if we can see them as our greatest teacher that we ask them to come and be that for us, so we could find our strength, we can find our courage, we can find who we are in our light, then we cannot be a victim. It makes that story and that perspective on life makes it impossible to be a victim. Because instead of feeling hurt and taken advantage of, maybe feeling sorry for ourselves, or running away from life and relationships because we are scared of getting hurt. That we actually learn to use those experiences as gifts to find who we are and find the strength in ourselves that we can never find before. And that's what I teach both women and good men with a path and a how to, because it's a wonderful story. And a wonderful way to, to perceive and, and live life. And it, it's very powerful and has changed many lives of people that I've worked with or even just had short conversations with. And I share that story to support them and what they're facing in their lives. But we also need a how to, how do we put that in perspective and how do we live that in a constructive way? Because again, it sounds wonderful, but if we don't have a how to put it into practice, it just becomes this lovely story. But yet we still feel hurt. We still feel taken advantage of. And so we have to learn how to navigate and for women to use their husbands as their greatest teacher. But for us, again, it's finding our, our goodness and our true nature as women and then teaching good men 
how to use the woman ways and emasculation of your wife as your greatest teacher to expose those weaknesses and limitations within yourself so that you strengthen them and then you can no longer be emasculated. It doesn't work anymore because you have your strength and confidence in yourself. And then it becomes your continued path to build your strength and to become the best version of yourself. And so that's that's the purpose of marriage for both men and, and for women is for us to expose the limitations within ourselves. They just look different because we have different issues and problems as women and as men. And then marriage becomes, like I said in the beginning, <laughs> had no idea that it would become such an incredible, reverent journey in a spiritual path that I never knew I needed or that it could be because I had it all wrong. I had marriage all wrong as well. And I had no roadmap and, and no path and didn't know that I would have to look at who I was as a woman, how I showed up with my husband. And now I am so grateful for that and then grateful for the path that I am on to be able to teach women and be able to teach good men. How do we do this in a way that works? Because the truth is, is that marriage is a value to many, many, many people. And it is a is something that either people want to make work or they do want to aspire to one day. And if you don't, that's okay. Like I said, marriage isn't for everyone. And, and by no means am I suggesting every man and woman get married because you should not, if you're not going to use it to grow and learn, if it's not a value, if it's not something important to you, please don't, please don't because it, it will, it will be a miserable experience. So, all right, gosh, that hour goes so fast. So I'm going to take a look. Uh, like I said, if you put question in all caps, that makes it easier uh, for me to find if you do have a question. And please remember to like this video, share it, subscribe, uh, turn notifications on so you're notified when I put new uh, videos out. Um, and I'm just going to take just a quick just a quick look. All right. I'm not seeing. Just looking. To see if there's any questions. Sorry for the, the delay. And also, um, yeah, oh, thanks, Paul. Paul says, I didn't do my homework. Yeah. We're not, unfortunately, we are, we are not taught that. Um, and if you're just joining, I did see a comment of she'll never talk about the laws. Um, I did in between segments. So once this post, you you can go back and see that. Um, oh, and I like Paul's comment too. He says, don't marry that kind of woman. And, and soon I'm going to do a video on, on three different kinds of women. But there are high maintenance women low emotional functioning women and low maintenance women and that men who are not already married or not in a relationship that you want to look for a woman who is low maintenance and i'll i'll, I'll do a, a video describing the different ones um so all right yeah okay Great. So I'm not seeing anything in here uh, in terms of, of a question. So I'm going to begin to wrap up. Thank you guys very much for joining me today. And also, I will not be here next weekend. I will not have a live stream next Saturday. Um, fun little fact. My husband and I both, a, a hobby we share and something we really enjoy um, are uh, air shows. <laughs> so my husband and I love jets and uh, we are going to see the Blue Angels uh, next weekend in Western Colorado. We live in Denver. Uh, and so we've seen the Blue Angels once uh, a couple of years ago now uh, up in Northern Colorado. And now we're traveling to go see them out west. It's just a, a quirky little hobby that we both enjoy and share together. Uh, my dad is a retired master chief from the Navy. 
Uh, and so I love going and watching the Blue Angels fly. And I, I love the sound and the feel. And it's just something that is very fun for me and that my husband enjoys. So I will not be here next week. And that's where I will be and enjoying my beautiful state and watching the Blue Angels fly. So I would, will look forward to seeing you guys again. Uh, and so I said, air shows are the best. Um, so, oh, and thank you. Someone said, statement, love your work. Keep it up. Thank you very much. And thanks for supporting me and the channel. And I will see you guys. Uh, with another live stream two weeks from now, but uh, stay tuned next week for some new videos and new shorts that I will uh, be putting out. And I hope everybody has a safe and enjoyable weekend and I'll see you again soon. Bye.